Good day, you're watching African Free Press Television. My name is Sam Adedoin Kubi, bringing you the news today. First, the headlines. Militants bomb Moando, shell Ajib wall truck lines in Bayelsa. 22,000 militants, cultists surrender arms in rivers. Senate rejects Buari's 46 non kara ambassadorial nominees. IGP Idris explains why police stopped Shahid's protest. Timmy Frank drags APC to court. Boko Haram members have infiltrated Karaba State. Now the news in detail. Less than 24 hours after the visit of the Chief of Naval Staff Vice Admiral Ibok Ibas to Bayelsa State, militants from the Niger Delta Avengers launched attacks on three oil facilities in the state. The Niger Delta Avengers, through its spokesman, Brigadier General Mordok Agbinibu, said the attacks in Nimbe were in response to operations shark bites and art of terrorism allegedly commissioned by the Navy establishment and orchestrated by some elements of the ruling political class to continuously undermine any effort of the Nigerian state to address the legitimate demands of the people of the Niger Delta and to blow the accounts of some security contractors and conflict merchants within the party structure of the APC. According to him, at about 11.45 p.m. on November 15, their elite strike team 03 struck Nimbe 1, 2 and 3 truck lines operated by Ajib, Wando and Shell with supply capacity of about 300,000 barrels per day to Boni Export Terminal in Bayelsa State. Agbinibo, who declared that time was thinning out for the federal government to kickstart a genuine dialogue, disclosed that NDA was ready for war and would go and would do everything to ensure the federal government gave in to its demand. A further cut of 300,000 barrels per day would further worsen the Nigerian economy, which is battling with recession presently. Market survey in August and September had indicated that oil output dipped by 1.44 million, with oil companies battling with several militant attacks. About 22,430 youths suspected to have indulged in militancy and cultism in river states have embraced the amnesty program packaged by the governor Nelson Wike led administration. This was even as Wike disbanded vigilance committees in all communities of the state. The governor also directed security agencies to henceforth go after cultists and kidnappers who refused to voluntarily accept the amnesty offer. He spoke at the government house, Port Harcourt, during the submission of the report of the state amnesty program. The committee had its membership drawn from the army, the navy, the police and the Department of State Services. It described the program as very successful, noting that the fact that 22,430 cultists accepted amnesty and surrendered 911 assorted arms with 7,661 ammunition and 147 explosives has made the state relatively peaceful. The governor explained that the state government resolved not to monetize the amnesty program because it wanted the cultists and kidnappers to sincerely embrace it. Presenting the report, the chairman, Sir Kenneth Chinda, said the committee was successful because it adopted a direct dialogue approach by establishing direct, honest, transparent and sincere contact with leadership of the various groups through a discreet confidence building process. The Senate yesterday rejected the list of 46 ambassadorial nominees sent by President Muhammadu Buhari last month. The rejection came barely 24 hours after the All Progressives Congress governors expressed displeasure with Buhari for not consulting with them over the list. The Senate has returned the list to Buhari to rework and represent it for approval. On Monday, Vice President Yemi Sibajo, acting on behalf of President Buhari, met with six APC governors, the Senate President Bukola Saraki and Speaker of the House of Representatives Honorable Yakubu Dugara, as well as Secretary to Government of the Federation Mr. Babachir David Lawal. The governors protested lack of consultation by the presidency before the names were forwarded to the Senate. The Senate returned the non career ambassadorial nominees to Buhari, sequel to the reports presented to the chamber by its chairman of the committee on foreign affairs, Senator Mansura Subono. After presenting the report, Subono told the lawmakers that the committee received over 250 petitions from the public protesting the lopsided composition of the non-career ambassadorial list. She said, even though the committee received many petitions against the career nominees, the complaints received against the 46 non-career ambassadorial nominees were more overwhelming. Accordingly, she advised the Senate to return the list to the President to enable him to prepare a new one that would be acceptable to Nigerians. The Inspector General of Police, 
Idris Ibrahim yesterday shed lights on the killings of some members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria, otherwise called shites, on Monday during a clash with police in Kano City. Nine people, including a police officer, were killed. While agreeing that rioters should not be killed, he said if the protesters were heavily armed, killing a police officer, the method deployed by the police should be appreciated. The clash reportedly started around Taburawa on the outskirts of Kano City when the police tried to stop a Shite protest. The Shites at late on Sunday accused soldiers of plotting to block their members heading to Kano from Yobe State while also planting weapons on them. The IGP made it clear that the Shites were constituting a nuisance as they were blocking roads and restricting movements and so the police engaged them. He said they killed an officer while another is seriously injured sustaining an arrow wound to the head. He also said his message to Nigerians is that everyone should be his brother's keeper and should appreciate the feelings of others and respect that every Nigerian has a right of freedom, right of association, and right of movement. The embattled Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, Comrade Timmy Frank, has filed a suit challenging the party over his suspension and alleged moves to expel him. Frank told journalists that he remained the acting spokesperson of the APC. Frank said, he approached the court to seek redress after the refusal of the party's National Working Committee to react to his letters citing relevant sections of the party's constitution on why he has right to act as the spokesperson of the party. He said he tried to resolve the crisis internally, doing everything possible to resolve it, but there was no response from Chief John Ojige Oyegun, which forced him to approach the court to seek legal redress. Frank, in his prayers, sought an order to restrain the respondents by themselves, committees, officers, agents, servants, previous or whosoever called from suspending and or otherwise taking any other disciplinary actions against him as a member of the APC pending the hearing and determination of the substantive originating summons. Governor Darius Ishako of Taraba State raised the alarm that members of the dreaded Boko Haram sect are taking over the state. According to him, the arrival of the violent foot soldiers has since unsettled the state as residents are now living in fear. The governor who made this claim while playing host to senators in his office in Jalingo said recent arrests and interrogations by security agents show that the sect members have infiltrated Taraba State. It will be recalled that the senator representing Taraba South, Senator Emmanuel Puacha, had earlier this year raised at the Senate allegations of high influx of unknown persons into Taraba State. Governor Ishaku said it was the responsibility of the federal government to take proactive measures to prevent any breakdown of law and order, urging the senators to evolve ways to tackle issues of insurgency in the country, particularly in the northeast, which had been ravaged by Boko Haram. That brings us to the end of the news today. I remain Sam Adedo Thanks for watching.